the lead. Sponsored by Hospital Discount Pharmacy, Lavish Boutique, Lavish Coffee, Jasper Veterinary Clinic, Jasper Bone and Joint, and Carl Cannon Chevrolet Buick GMC. Welcome to The Lead. Uh, filling in for Greg Tinker today, I'm your host, Al Blanton, and we have a power pack show for you today. This is our first time having two guests, and today we welcome Dora head coach, Chavis Williams, and assistant coach, uh, Roy Upchurch. Guys, glad to have you today. Glad to be here. And the same, glad to be here. Well, I wanted to start out tough one last night against Winfield City, and um, as a former coach, I understand how tough you know losing is, and so... What was your message to your team uh, tonight, last night, and today? Um, the message was everything we want still in front of us. Um, you know, games like that will um, find out the character of our team. And um, I told them that, uh, you know, moving forward, you know, them little mistakes, um, we need to learn from them. And um, I really like this team. Um, I think they're going to develop into a really good team. You know, that's why they call it a season. Um, just told them that everything still is in front of them. You know, of course it sucks. It's tough, you know, anytime you lose, but, uh, you know, early in the year, we don't get so worked up on to the point of panic mode, and I don't think nobody should, and uh, we're just going to fix our mistakes, um, and that includes us as a coaching staff. We're going to put our best foot forward and um, look forward to the rest of the year. Let's talk about some of your impact players. Who are some of the guys that are really making going to make an impact, and then who are some guys that are kind of flying under the radar that, that we should keep an eye on? Um, yes, of course. Um I'll, I'll speak, and then if Coach wants to say something after me, he can. Um, you know, um, guys that first come to mind are the Priors, um, Corey and Keisha, um, seniors, um, Joshua Williams, um, Cleveland Jones, um, Garrett Hoagland, um, Jaden Griffin, um, you know, um, Kate Chanel, which is, um, he's a really, really big boy. Big uh -huh. yeah. um, you know, um, Braxton Kitchens, I'm just thinking of, and of course I'm going to leave something off, but those guys that, you know, kind of stick out up front. Um, we need more guys to get better quick. Um, that's the message as well. But um, those, those are who we um, consider our leaders of the team and um, who we build everything around. And um, need for them to step up in games when it's time to step up. So. Coach, before we went on the show, you, you were talking a little bit about some of those young guys. What's it going to take for those guys to kind of step up and be leaders? Really just step into the leadership role. A lot of these guys haven't, stepped into the role as a leader just because they haven't played that much football. Mm -hmm. And I think gaining more experience will allow us to optimize our talent as a team. Mm -hmm. um, but going forward, those guys he's named, um, those are special guys. Those are guys who can change the game at any point from each position. Um, you know, our left tackle, we're missing him. But, you know, he has a focal point mm -hmm. on this offense and, um, you know, and defense as well. But Having those guys hone in to the attention to detail and just managing uh, the expectation that Coach Williams has for everybody, I think if we continue to, with that formula, we go far. Let's stay with you for a moment. You spent some time after you played at Alabama at Georgia Military College and South Carolina IMG Academy, Florida State, uh, Pinson Valley. What was it about the situation at Dora that interested you? Well, it was me wanting to work with my brother. Um, we grew up at Alabama together, had hard times, had good times, and, you know, I envision a championship coming from those programs as well. Um, but it was just us having the same chemistry, the same dynamic coming from the same cloth that mm -hmm. we, uh, we envisioned mm -hmm. going forward, um, just for his program as well. And, and I think that him allowing me to have the coordinator opportunity, I get to, uh, just remain as flexible as I want to be, mm -hmm. uh, calling how I want to be, and, and bringing all my experience to a program like Dora mm -hmm. to help them take on the championship. Yeah. Let's go back 16 years to 2007. It's been that uh, long? <laughs> it has been, if my math is correct. Wow. Uh, Chavis, you're a freshman. Roy, you're a sophomore in Alabama. And Nick Saban has just been hired as a head coach. What was it about that first year that he established that kind of set the tone for the coming years? I see some smiles coming on your faces you, now you about that time. First with him, well, uh, like you said, I was there first, but the expectation was win. Yeah. The expectation was come in, uh, fill a role, find a role, and do it at your best. Optimize your performance the best that you can. And Coach Saban instilled that in all of us. And to this day, you know, we laughed at 
you know, we're brainwashed, but it's a formula for success. It's a formula for life um, to uh, face adversity, to overcome it, to win against daily challenges. You know, those are those are what life's bringing you every single day from your wife and kids to your job to your car breaking down. So, uh, you know, just having this opportunity um, has given us a lot of grit mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. And so as a player, 18, 19 years old, it was tough mm -hmm. just because he demanded what he wanted done. And if you didn't do it, here comes this shiny new freshman. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my personal experience you know, it was, it was, I dealt with a lot of injuries. So, you know, I had to overcome a lot as mm -hmm. well. A lot of surgeries, a lot of downtime, a lot of recovery time. And, you know, I never uh, met my talent level, mm -hmm. but he kept, he kept uh, insisting that, you know, I, I check these boxes. Mm -hmm. He kept insisting that I, I demand a certain level of expectation out of myself. And he pushed us, he mm -hmm. pushed us all. And, you know, that started the dynasty. Mm -hmm. Coach, piggyback off what he said, it just it, I just noticed right up front, he was consistently the same person every time you saw him. You was going to get the same thing out of him. You knew what to expect. Um, he, he demands excellence, nothing nothing less. Um, and, of course, I was a freshman at the time. And, you know, the whole recruiting thing, he's he's, he's kind of a nice, a little nicer when he's recruiting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then when, nice. when you first get in that first practice, you find out real quick this is the real deal. Yeah. But um, just – just watching him, um, the way he is organized and the way that he runs the program, and you can't, if you're doing football or any kind of sport or anything in life, you want to try to model some of those things within reason what you can't do with the resources that you do have. So, um, you know, I think we call him granddaddy now, mess around about it. We call him granddaddy because he got grandkids, but we're going to go see granddaddy one day. But, uh, but you know, I think what he's when he got there, you know, he ran guys off that mm -hmm. that weren't going to buy in mm -hmm. and wasn't afraid to change mm -hmm. and evolve over mm -hmm. time, as you see mm -hmm. as the years that went by. Because I, I never thought in a million years that he'd be a no hugger guy. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. I never, <laughs> we, we we when we were there, we were sm oh sorry, we were smash mouth, <laughs> um, two tight end, two running back, running the ball, quarterback, game manager. Rely on great defense. Now it's all spread and you know shotgun yeah. all the time and get as many plays in as possible. But that that's the way the game's changed. So I think his evolution, being able to change over time and adapt, yeah. is what makes what separates him. And um, you know he had good coaching staff too, man. We we were blessed to be around good guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, like position coaches and stuff who we still talk to to this yeah. day. Like that was the University of Alabama was was a man it was an eye opener for how something really is supposed to look in the sports world and the relationships that were built over time. You just think, I'd never know this cat, Yeah, you know, yeah. if we didn't play together. And the relationship that we formed and, and, and what you asked him earlier, and I know we, we all got off topic a little bit. When I went to look, when I decided that we need a new offensive coordinator, it's just like, just like God just, I mean, we went to a track meet and, um, Gosh, we, I drove the track team to Hewitt Trussell, mm -hmm. and we linked up again. Hadn't mm -hmm. talked in a while, you know, uh, because we got families and everything mm -hmm. else. You know, you got a job to do, I got a job. But, um, you know, Mount Cody was with us last year. Uh, we Hopefully we can get him back out here. Um, and, you know, that was kind of the in-between in in guy. Mm -hmm. He was talking to TC, mm -hmm. I was talking to TC. But I saw Roy and Coach Up Church, and, um, you know, when I left there that day, I thought if I can ever get a chance to hire him, mm -hmm. by God I was, you know, because I know what I'm getting. You know, I know what I'm getting, a, first of all, a man of faith. That's the first thing. And also a brother who I can trust and who's, who, you know, got the same personality of tough, physical, you know, um, try to get a physical run game, um, being disciplined up front and you know, all across the board and, and just, Really, just caring about these mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. you know. Cause, but um, and I think we learned a lot of that from our coach. Mm -hmm. Coach Williams knows this about me, but uh, Roy, I, um, my day job is that I, I have this local magazine here called Seventy Eight Magazine. But one of the things that I've been blessed to do over the years is doing a lot of sports writing, and uh, I wrote this piece for Saturday Down South, which is an SEC football website, uh, several years ago. And the question was, what is the process? You know, uh, what is that all about? You know, you hear about the Saban's process. 
And as I was continuing to uh, interview people, I think I interviewed you for that mm -hmm. article and Barrett Jones and some of the other guys that came through, the thing that I sort of came to the conclusion of was that it's really two things. One is that you've got to have an understanding what it takes to be great. And two, you've got to be willing to do what it takes to be great. So you, there's an understanding phase and then there's a doing what it takes phase. Mm -hmm. Was I right on that assessment? Was yeah, I pretty close? Is that, is that about yeah. what it's about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Talk about the, you know, how, how, what it takes to understand and, and, and maybe how y'all are implementing those things now at Dora. Well, really it just takes the reassurance that somebody has your back. And a coach like Coach Saban, he'll give you chance after chance, 10 times, and you can still prove that you're gonna assert your value mm -hmm. some way or another to the program. And Coach Saban is a guy who, he's a leader. Mm -hmm. And you, as 19, 20 year old guys, you gotta find somebody in life that you really rely on to help you provide those steps going forward. So um, I just think me personally, uh, Coach Saban was hard on me just mm -hmm. because I had so much potential, but I didn't really optimize my potential like mm -hmm. I needed to. Mm -hmm. And he gave me chance after chance to really emerge of who I needed to be. And once I finally caught on as a student athlete, he gave me more love. Mm -hmm. He gave me more acceptance into mm -hmm. his standards. Mm -hmm. And if you can't gain his acceptance, then you're kind of mm -hmm. irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Coach, you got anything to add to that? The process <laughs> ain't gonna work, but no, it's um, it's, it's, it's you, you were spot on. It's really the understanding, you know, everything is defined, everything is defined in the program, like all the way down to the nutritionist and everybody know their job, and um, you know, just just his ability to get guys to want to be better, to do more. To be competitive, you know, our practices were harder than games. Mm -hmm. You know, they were first defense, first offense, and that was a bloodbath. Mm -hmm. You know, so the games were easy. Mm -hmm. So we're how we're trying to implement those kind of things on our level is, you know, trying to get those kind of things mm -hmm. going in the aspect of everybody's important. Um, everybody has a job to do, whether they're the scout team or the first team or the scout team coach or the car holder or anybody, everybody has a job to do and, and it's expected of them to do it every day. Mm -hmm. So consistency and performance is um, one of the things that, and we can't do everything that they do. You know, it's, it's just, it's not enough resources, but the, the, keeping the main thing, the main thing mm -hmm. is just, uh, you know, everybody showing up to work every day and doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. 2008, you go to the SEC championship game, you lose to Florida. We're supposed to win. Supposed to win. Just watch you know, that documentary. You know, Just watch that documentary. What did it take to get over the hump? Because you had you lost a two-time national champion in Florida. Uh, they, they, would, they would later win it that year. Um, you lost to Tim Tebow. But then there was a mental hurdle to overcome the next year. How do you overcome that to come back the next year and win it in 2009? What did it take to kind of overcome Florida? Well, we knew going into 08 after that Clemson game that we weren't below the top 25. Mm -hmm. We knew that we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any team that lines up against us. And, you know, making it all the way to the SEC championship was a goal, but mm -hmm. that was the highest, highest peak that we mm -hmm. made it as a unit, mm -hmm. as a family. Uh, being under that one one ceiling, um, so we didn't know we, we didn't really know what was next. Mm -hmm. And so going into that game, yes, we had a little bravado about us, but it wasn't enough to say we're national champions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so losing to them was kind of like a knee jerk mm -hmm. because we knew we were supposed to win. If Dante didn't get the pass interference, mm -hmm. it would have mm -hmm. been a good play, uh, a good game. But and then turn around and lose to Utah. Mm -hmm. You know, it really opened our eyes to what this program can really become. Mm -hmm. And so just going forward, uh, that next year, you know, everybody was ready to roll. Everybody mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. at their best early in the year. We played Virginia Tech. Everybody was playing, mm -hmm. flying around like their hair was on fire. And we had the formula down pack. And, you know, game after game, the consistency uh, that Coach Saban prescribes for us, we, we bought into it. And... We made it to the championship mm -hmm. game. So um, I just think it just really took uh, the family becoming more loving to the program mm -hmm. and, and meeting our potential. Mm -hmm. 
The other thing I think is that y'all kind of knew what you had. You know, I mean, you knew you had a great team. Coach, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I, just like he just said the best, um, you know, being an unfamiliar territory, to say the, I mean, we didn't, mm -hmm. you know, when we lost that game, it was, it was the build up for the game. It was like, okay, we're in the SEC championship. I don't mm -hmm. think we really, coach used to always talk about that was one of the goals of the team was to win the SEC because it's hard to win the SEC year in and year out. And I think when we got there, you know, the game probably was a little bit too big at the time, mm -hmm. like you said, mm -hmm. because of, you know, it was just hadn't been there, you know, hadn't been there in a, in a while, you know, and, um, just, I think it was just all part of it, part mm -hmm. of the climb. Mm -hmm. Part of it was just part, it was, you had to, you got to go through stuff to get where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So, um, after that, he was right, guy for dedicated and, um, set goals to get there. Um, and he may remember this story. I can remember the next year after we beat Florida, um, being in, you're probably going to talk about that in a minute, but, <laughs> you know, just being in the hotel and, and a lot of this stuff is private because we, we, we did a good job of keeping stuff. Today, people got to deal with social media, kids having phones in the locker room and stuff. But we had an incident in California where guys were doing something they weren't supposed to do. And we had a players only meeting uh, and Rolando kind of led that. Yeah. And he know exactly what I'm talking about. And, uh, you know, just having stuff like that go on, knew it was meant to yeah. be. You know, the next year. So we learned from that yeah. uh, from that loss. So the players were able to kind of police yes. the rest of the team. Yes, yeah. yes. Player-led player -led team is a championship team all day, any day. Let's stay in 2009. You know, the game during the regular season that really stands out is the, is the Tennessee game with the two blocks from Mount Cody. But, you know, I mean, y'all had your backs against the wall all day against Auburn. What What is it about going down there that is so difficult, you know? It's almost like going down there, no, no discredit to Auburn, they're a good program, but they weren't where we were. And so they give us their, their Super Super Bowl game plan mm -hmm. every time, mm -hmm. every time. And it might be something that we've never seen offensively. It might be something they've never seen mm -hmm. defensively, but they give us a Super Bowl caliber toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe fight. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, I would say just the unexpected, what makes the rivalry so great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a good time down there at Auburn. Mm -hmm. What would you say, Coach? <laughs> I, don't like, I didn't like playing there. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, man, he, he answered all the questions. I just think it, the rivalry is it's a big rivalry. And, you know, you people play above their means. Um, they get a little extra motivated. When you one of the best, so roll tight to that. Um, you know you get you gonna get everybody's best game, but uh, I open those slouch though. I mean they're 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 year in and year out. You know they can can be. I don't know they're a top top ten program. Yeah, and they have players. And it's a, and the thing about that game is it's an in state game. So it's whereas LSU and Alabama know it's out of state still, but a lot of these guys know each other really yeah. well from yeah. these two campuses. So. So that's extra motivation to play hard against people that you do know. You know, they, they are there. Golly. But I, they say to win the championship, you got to have a little luck on your side. And I'm proud my man here caught that power pass in the play. Oh, well, <laughs> let, well, let's talk about that for a second because this was my next question. I mean, incredible catch in the end zone, a little over a minute to go in the game. Kind of walk us through that play and then talk about kind of how that's impacted you over the years. Well, the whole drive and the whole buy-in was there. I mean, we started to – the drive in their red in their red zone, mm -hmm. um, but everybody bought in. You know, mm -hmm. Trent ran the ball well. Julio caught, I think, five or six or seven balls just on that series, mm -hmm. and really moved the chains for us. You know, I was just the icing on the cake mm -hmm. um, that was just ready to play at the time, and I knew uh, Coach McElwain would call the right play to get it going. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted you? What's I mean, do people still talk about that when they see you? Well, and, everybody does, and I just uh, I take the back seat to it just because um, you know I'm a dad now, and that kind of overshadows yeah um, your family sometimes. And I I I entertain it, but I just yeah it happened. It's history, and I'm just glad I'm part of history. Yeah, if it happened to me, I'd probably be like making hats and t-shirts and going around, because it's just, just an incredible moment for, for Alabama football. And, and it was. Yeah. Um, but that, that team earned that moment, not just me. Yeah. Um, collectively, I think 
it took more than me just to get us to that spot. Yeah. Uh, Coach, you had an opportunity to play uh, in the NFL, play for the Ravens on a 12-4 and four team, and uh, play alongside guys like Ray Lewis and Terrell Suggs and Ed Reed. What did you learn from those guys? Um, leadership. You know, that was a veteran team. I think at the time it was the oldest team in the NFL. You know, um, just being around those guys, see how they carry themselves. Um, taught me more how to be a pro and um, more off the field, you know, how to take care of business, how to take care of your family. You know, um, I was still young when I went up there, but them guys had been in there a long time. So um, the biggest takeaway that I can take away from them, you know, is, you know, to be able to make people better than what they are, your teammates or people in the organization to, to lift them up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you lift each other up, you all rise, you know, that statement mm -hmm. so that they really believe in that. You know, it's play like a raven. Um, it's a great organization. Um, they still send stuff out each year. They take a happy birthday each year. They send out a gift each year um, that goes by. But I still talk to Ed pretty much all the time. And actually, the connection with Ed um, Reed when he took over at Bethune for that short mm -hmm. time, actually a linebacker that I had last year, um, Cole Chapman actually picked up a full scholarship from that connection, you know, and then Cole's a great player. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, with having that connection with him and for Ed to trust me in that short amount of time mm -hmm. to, about a player and to take them, man, that, that, um, that means a lot to me you know, for the brotherhood that we built in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But those guys are, are great leaders, um, all of them on that team. Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Hello Donato, um, Ed Reed, those guys stick out. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just learned how to be a better leader. Mm -hmm. You know, when people talk about the difference between college and the NFL, a lot of times they'll talk about the speed. There's a speed difference. Did you notice that? And if, I mean, what were the differences between college um, and the NFL? I would say the speed in the the line, you know, defensive yeah. line, secondary, secondary and receivers, they yeah. they everywhere. You can go D3 and get them, but, you know, the the speed of the defensive linemen and the play of the quarterbacks uh, in the NFL and <laughs> long play calls. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you had an interaction with Ray Lewis the first time you ever met him in the cafeteria. Do you remember, remember when we talked about that before? Tell us a little bit about that story. He, I think he got you some shoes or something? Oh, uh, yeah, because um, <laughs> I, I was, they put me in the circle of trust or whatever because I, um, you know, stood up for one of my teammates and he got me a pair of Under Armour slides. Um, told me, here you go, Slim. He called me Slim. Back then, I was I was frail, <laughs> probably about 215 pounds when I went to Baltimore. But, yeah, um, just him, you know, just, I mean, he's Ray Lewis. Yeah. You know, he don't, I mean, a lot of guys can be arrogant, Buttholes, you know, they don't have yeah. to. Um, I'm just a little pee on the door trying yeah. to make a team. You know, he don't have to talk to me or whatever. I'm undrafted, but just him taking time up um, and forming a relationship meant a lot and told a lot about who he was as a man. Well, guys, I could sit here and ask questions all day about Alabama and NFL and all that kind of stuff. We do need to wrap this uh, interview up. and. And I want to go back to Dora for a moment. I mean, you guys were teammates in Alabama, and now y'all are coaching together. How is that different? How has that been for you guys so far? Are y'all kind of like roommates? You know, there, there may be a little bickering here and there. What's your relationship like now? Bickering. That's a, a <laughs> understatement. It is an understatement. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's good quality love. It's a yeah. bond. It's a friendship. And just coming to practice and coming to work every day is, is something that – I enjoy uh, being around Coach Williams. He, uh, I know what he wants. I know what he expects from a team. I know what he's been around. He's been to the NFL. He's been to Alabama. So I can't bring him high school coaching. Mm -hmm. I have to bring him professional mm -hmm. level uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just to have this opportunity is, is God-given. And I just really I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity. Man, same. I'm just... Hint, over Coach Up Church, he, I respect him because, you know, and he ain't a yes man. You know, he's going to tell you what to feel and tell you the truth. And I want, want guys around me that's going to tell me, yeah. even if it's uncomfortable or even if it's not what I want to hear. Because you, that's that's how you grow. You get, get people around you in a room that's going to help the whole program grow by bringing good stuff to the table and being honest and being loyal and uh, being respectful towards the peers, you know, towards the kids. But um, it, it's been great. Um, I look forward to see where it goes. 
Um, we we got some talent on this team, and and I want to let. I'm sitting here thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, Julian Satterfield is a kid that I left off who played pretty good last night and has a bright future as well. So um, I'm I'm thankful to have him around, along with the other coaches that we do have. We got we got a good staff, man. We uh we jail together, and it's gonna only get better because we're gonna get some camaraderie going between everybody. So. One of the things we do on the show always is we uh, get our guests to sign the posters. So if you guys would do the honors, I would certainly appreciate that. Just anywhere you want to. That's abnormal, like that. The ABLGS. There we go. <laughs> All right. Y'all can have a seat, guys. And we really appreciate y'all joining us today. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. Uh, well, that's it for our show today. For your host, Greg Tinker, for Chavis Williams and Royal Upchurch, I'm Al Blanton. We'll see you next time on The Lead. The Lead, sponsored by Hospital Discount Pharmacy, Lavish Boutique, Lavish Coffee, Jasper Veterinary Clinic, Jasper Bone and Joint, and Carl Cannon Chevrolet Buick GMC.